the Arab proposals. Number one, the first proposal of King Abdallah. One, one kingdom. Two, administration selected by the Jews in areas inhabited by them. Three, one parliament in which Jews were to be represented in proportion to their demographic share. Four, mixed cabinet. The second proposal of King Abdullah. To partition of Palestine between Lebanon, Jordan, and Egypt with the remainder left to the Jews. The third was a the proposal of Nuri al-Said in 1942, which calls for one state and Jewish autonomy within this state. All pre-1948 proposals called for a single state and some approach the Jews as the Palestinians are now treated, namely in terms of offering them autonomy and partition of land. The failure to accept the notion of a single state is thus the historical mistake which lies behind today's tragedy. A declaration establishing one state by one party for its own benefit is also a mistake. The concept of partition has proven its failure and will continue to do so. Before 1948, the Jews were regarded in just the same manner as the Palestinians are regarded today. They were a minority in Palestine, fed illusions of self-rule at one moment and autonomous Jewish areas at another. Palestinians were in the majority. That is why they rejected the well-known partition resolution of 1947. Following 1948, this situation was reversed. The Palestinians became the minority as a result of the 1948 and 1967 wars. The Jews became the majority within the area called Israel. Promises of self-rule, Arab areas, and partition were made to the Arabs, just as they had previously been made to the Jews. The definitive historic solution is the one proposed in this, the White Book. The purpose of this overview of the various proposals was to recall that the notion of a single state in Palestine has always been on the negotiating table. The rejection of that solution is the cause of the tragedy experienced by the region today. The alternative to the one state solution is what we see before us today. The two state solution risks and misconceptions. As Israeli scholar, a brigadier who served as a military commander in the West Bank from 1974 to 1976, once said that it was not possible to accept the partition of Palestine or agree to foreign rule over Israel's territory. He justified his refusal with the following facts, which, because of their critical nature, cannot be ignored. The West Bank is 50 kilometers wide. It is a mountainous area, up to 1,000 meters high. It overlooks Israel's vital heartland, a coastal plain that is no more than 14 to 20 kilometers in width. 67% of Israel's population lives in this area. It is also home to 80% of Israel's industries. The presence of another party in the West Bank poses a direct threat to the Israeli heartland. It cannot therefore be accepted. Brigadier Mier Bail is a dove, a member of the Zionist left and of the Peace Council. However, he states categorically, quote, we have a historical right to the West Bank. Many believe it to be the heart of the Jewish nation. Our right to retain it is sacredly ordained in the religious and historical duties and traditions in which the people of Israel believe. The same the argument for not conceding the West Bank on grounds of vital reasons of security is put forward by Ari Shalev, a scholar and brigadier. Quote, were we to lose the West Bank, he wrote, Israel's depth between Tokarum and Netanya would be just 15 kilometers, and between Kalkalia and Hetzalia coast just 14 kilometers. Israel would thus be exposed due to the lack of strategic depth in the face of any threat. In the event of a war breaking out in the West Bank, Israel would be divided into two or three parts if an Arab army manages to reach the coast. He goes on to say, quote, even without a war, Israel would remain under constant threat from the West Bank. The Israeli airspace would also be at the mercy of the West Bank. He said further, quote, To ensure Israel's security, the West Bank must be divided into three defensive positions, namely the Jordan Valley, the foothills of the mountains of Samaria, and the Judean Desert, and the high peaks that link Jenin, Tobas, Nablus, the Lafuna Heights, Ramallah, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and Tikwa. This is in addition to 
fixed lines of defense in the south of the Gaza Strip. Any separation area between the Palestinians and Israelis would not be source of security for Israel. In fact, it would constitute a constant security irritant. However, he noted, quote, Israel's policies have poisoned the Zionist idea of transforming the country into a binational state. Professor Shalom Evener said, quote, The Israeli-Palestinian dispute differs from all other disputes of the 19th and 20th centuries. Those disputes have been essentially border disputes, despite the fact that some of them lasted for over 100 years. The essence of the Israeli-Palestinian dispute differs from these, however. It is a struggle between two movements, each of which believes that the same territory belongs to it or constitutes part of its national homeland. Thus, the Palestinians believe that what is now called Israel forms part of their nation, even if they got the West Bank and Gaza. In the same way, the Jews believe that the West Bank is Judea and Samaria. They see it as part of their homeland, even if a Palestinian state were established there. He wrote of the West Bank, quote, For the Jews, it is their historical homeland, home of a glorious heritage and the land of salvation. For the Arabs, Professor Avneri continues, it is their land. They have ruled it as Arabs and Muslims since the 7th century. The majority of its inhabitants are Arab Muslims. It forms part of the greater Arab homeland stretching from the Gulf to the Atlantic Ocean. Thus, it is no different from Yemen or Iraq. He also notes that the Arabs call it Palestine or southern Syria. The Zionist movement, by contrast, calls it the land of Israel. In such a situation, he writes, quote, One of the two movements must destroy the other, or a compromise must be reached. The compromise is the establishment of one state for all allowing each party to feel that they live in all the disputed land and that they are not deprived of any one part of it. Recognition of Palestinian self-determination means nothing more than the definition of the area of activity permitted them by Israel. He opposes this solution because, in his opinion, it is not a solution at all. Professor Evneri also writes, quote, I do not support the establishment of a Palestinian state in the West Bank and Gaza Strip because it is not possible to separate one million Palestinians living east of the Jordan from their Palestinian identity. A Palestinian state in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip cannot resolve the problem of refugees, even those in Lebanon and Syria. Any situation which keeps the majority of Palestinians in refugee camps and does not offer an honorable solution within the historical borders of Israel-Palestine is no solution at all. The establishment of a Palestinian state in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip and was prepared to live in peace with Israel, even under a moderate leadership other than that of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, would not be a real solution either. Such solution would not address the problem of refugees and repatriation, even if just to accommodate refugees from Lebanon in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. The area is simply too small to absorb such numbers. Yahu Shifat Herkabi, a Zionist strategist and scholar, a university lecturer who specializes in Arab-Israeli dispute and other of several books, writes, quote, Acceptance by the Palestinian Liberation Organization of a Palestinian state in the West Bank is nothing but a tactical step to settle its account with Israel. It will demand more. It will continue its struggle in order to achieve its further objectives. Acceptance of a state in the West Bank and Gaza Strip merely postpones the continuation of the struggle to a later stage. Demilitarized zones are an experience that has failed abysmally. Control and sovereignty over them is dubious and diluted. As such, they are a cause of conflict, not stability. Quote, the establishment of an independent Palestinian state would also put an end to the Israeli dream of greater Israel. It would also force the Palestinians to concede the rest of Palestine. This statelet would be vulnerable to increasing interference in its domestic affairs by both Jordan and Israel. This would inevitably lead to violent conflict. Mati Stanberg, lecturer at the Hebrew University, writes, quote, Agreement to the transitional objective of the establishment of a Palestinian state in the West Bank Gaza Strip should not, in any circumstance, be interpreted as a concession that replaces of the final objective. That kind of settlement is nothing more than a brief stage in the framework of the conventional wisdom which remains unchanged. 
That Zionist lecturer fears that an agreement to the exercise of self-determination would also have to apply to the so-called Israeli Arabs and to the Palestinians in Jordan.